Hello, welcome to today's live. Our topic today is what is working with our emotions to align our body with our essential nature. Working with our emotions to align our body with our essential nature. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of this Facebook community, Answering the Call. And the call that most of us <clears throat> are, um, you know, I've heard a lot over the years, what's my calling? Uh, what am I here to do? So that's what we're doing here in this group. We're answering the call in two ways. One is when we feel this sense of longing, something's missing in my life, or that question, you know, what is there for me to do? Is this all there is to life? What What's going on here? So the first is we're answering that call and discovering our essential nature, which is this one being, one with everything, and not just intellectually, not conceptually, that's the booby prize in life, but to embody that knowing and understanding and to live that. And then the second is, once we know that, our essential nature, who we truly are, then how, how do we want to express that? What's my unique way to express this unique being? So we're doing both here and answering the call. So welcome. If you're here in person, please say hi. Love knowing that you're here. I'll say hi to you. If you're here, write it in the comments, hi. If you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay. I love knowing that you are here. If you have any questions or comments throughout this time or when you're watching a replay, please put them in and I will answer them. So we will get started then with working with our emotions to align our bodies with our essential nature. So last week I promised we'd do some emotional work here. So I'm honoring that promise and doing helping you work with your emotions. So. We're going to explore why this element, working with emotions, is important to embodying our essential nature. We're going to review three ways to work with emotions, and then we're going to do an experiential exercise that has the opportunity to experience all three of these. So why is it important? Partly because of what I said a minute ago about concepts. If we don't, most of us spend a great deal of our lives trying to avoid our feelings. <laughs> Lots of things to avoid our feelings like watching TV, reading, um, exercising, um, uh, reading books all the time. I already said reading, you know, having a glass of wine, going shopping, lots of things to avoid our feelings. Why do we do that? Well, we think, again, this isn't like well thought out, but there's some sort of thinking behind, you know, I shouldn't feel this way. This is wrong. Or this will be so terrible if I feel this. Or, um, uh, you know, or I don't want to feel this. So that we don't want to because it'll be so terrible. We're going to die or something. We're just going to fall apart. Something. We have some sort of belief around feeling our emotions that keeps us from doing that. We stay in concepts. We say things like, I feel anger. But... We, but then we often that puts it into a concept category because now we've named it and now we're talking about it and we may not really be letting ourselves experience the emotion. And that, and that keeps us stuck in the current understanding that most of us have that we're separate beings. Why? Because all of our lived experiences are in our bodies. And these emotions that our bodies are holding on to that are here because we've experienced them and we haven't let them go because we're denying them, we're pushing them away, we don't want to look at them, we don't want to feel them. So we're going to stay right here till we're ready to see them and let them go. Not by just saying, I'm going to let that go. No, we have to do it in an embodied way, not a conceptual way for it to make a, a, the real difference that I'm offering here. So... Um, so it's in our bodies and, and those feelings are out of alignment. They're telling us that we're missing the understanding of who we are. They're great gifts because they're telling us we're misunderstanding who we are and the nature of life. Why is that? Because we're identifying with those emotions. We're holding on to them. We think they mean something when all they are is energy that we've attached a story to their energy floating through wanting to flow through us i mean language is not the great i mean they don't have a desire to flow through us but like clouds 
They, they're just floating through. They're ready to, I mean, that's a better way to say it. They're just ready to float through, but we don't like them. we have now attaching a story to them. We think there's a separate self that's feeling these feelings and all of that keeps them in our bodies. And it's letting us know that we have a misunderstanding of reality. So they're great gifts, but that's why it's important for us to work with our emotions so we can um, um, uh, relax our attention from them, relax into our essential nature and not let them continue to stay there and to identify with them. So three ways we're going to work with emotions today is we're going to have tea with them. We're, uh, so what that means is that let's say you're feeling upset about something. So again, we will tend to deny it. We'll, we'll, we might notice, oh, I'm feeling upset, and then we'll go do something. We'll get busy, or we'll go talk to somebody, or we'll call a friend, or we'll take a walk. We'll do something because we don't want to feel it. Maybe we think we shouldn't feel it. Um, so but let's say we're upset, and what we can do then is have tea with it. What that means is we're allowing it. Who we truly are is the open, empty, allowing space of awareness. So we're being who we are by allowing it. It's here. Like if a guest came to your door, you open the door, you let them in. That's all this feeling of upset is. It's a friend visiting. So we can have tea with it. We can just say you know, to I mean, say silently to yourself some version of, oh, you've been around for a long time. And some of these emotions, of course, our whole lives. You've been with me my whole life. But I've never really been here with you. I've allowed you to be here, gotten to know you. Let's just sit down and have tea together. Now you don't go, when I say get to know you, I'm not inviting you to get go the psychological route, trying to understand why, where did it come from, all of that. That is, that's irrelevant here. Why is it irrelevant? Well, because, um, because we've, it's irrelevant because, um, Sorry, you're seeing me think this through. That is, I was kind of thinking about today. I wasn't thinking about getting into this. So, but I, I think it's probably be best that I do. So, w when I say um, the psychological uh, component, we're trying to figure out why this happened. Is is the truth is, life is happening. Life is happening. We're being lived. The universe is moving through and moving with 8 billion people, much less trillions of animals and plants and rocks and the earth and all of this is going on. We're being lived. So there's no way to know why. There's no way to know why. That's our rational mind and our psychological upbringing that wants to know why. We can't know why. Air, all everything in the universe is influencing us and we're influencing it. So we can't know why. And the same thing with meaning. That's our rational minds wanting to make sense of it, wanting to make meaning of it. There's nothing wrong with doing anything that I'm saying here. It's just a different context that keeps us trapped in living aligned with the misunderstanding of who we think we are. So what we're doing here is aligning with the truth of who we are. So, um, so we don't want to get into the psychological um, uh, explanation or research because that also keeps it here. When we name it, we keep it here, and so on. we keep it here. <laughs> makes it solid. Makes it real. So we. Um, so, one, but one thing is we can do, we just invite it to have tea, just sit down. And what does that mean? What am I really saying there? If we're not doing the psychological, trying to figure out, get to know them, not that. It's a context. It's a, it's a space. It's a way of relating to this emotion, just like you would a friend. So that's really what I'm defining here about let's sit down and have tea and get to know each other. It's just the allowing, just sitting still with this emotion, allowing it. Being, being friends with it, just like you would a friend. You just sit down with each other. Okay, so that's one way. Another is, and it's really part of the first one, we welcome emotions. So you can do the, we're going to do this in a minute, like a sequ sequence, but you can do any of these separate. You don't have to put them all three together, uh, but you, or you can't always put all three together. And you trust yourself. 
how do I want to approach these emotions? It's up to you. There's no right way to do this. All right, so then the next one is that we welcome them, which you already did with the other, but you welcome them. And then I want to tell you a story. For, we bring them really close. And now here's the story that goes with that. So you've probably heard of the princess and the frog. So the princess is out playing uh, by a pond. It's just this beautiful gold ball that's her favorite ball. And as she's playing with it, all of a sudden she throws it and it lands in this pond way at the bottom. And she knows there's no way she can get to it. She's all dressed in her beautiful clothes. She doesn't know how to swim, maybe. <laughs> I'm making that up. Um, but anyway, she can't get to the ball. A frog shows up and says, oh, princess, I'll get the ball with for you if you'll promise me that and do and then fall through that you'll spend the rest of the day and the night with me that we'll spend the next day together and through the night I'll get the ball for you and the princess wants the ball so badly that she says oh yes I'll do anything thank you thank you so the frog recovers the ball gives her the ball and then she stays there for a little bit and then she leaves and the frog goes wait a minute we had a deal here but she just goes on her merry way she goes home she's having dinner later that night with the king Knock, knock, knock on the door. The uh, servant answers the door, and then in comes the frog. Frog explains what has happened, and the king said, oh, you need to honor your promise to this frog. So you need to do exactly what you agreed to do. Be with this frog through the night and through the tomorrow. And so the princess now is not very happy about that. Of course, this ugly frog, and she's this princess, but Okay, so she takes the frog and they go to her bedroom that night and and he's sitting on the pillow next to her and she turns over to go to sleep and goes, oh, no, 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 I, you need to kiss me. You need to kiss me. You need to hold me close. So she reluctantly does. She holds him close and she kisses him and keeps, him, keeps holding him in her arms and falls asleep. And the next morning when she wakes up, she sees this handsome, beautiful prince next to her. So what's the moral of the story? That's what we want to do with our emotions. We bring them so close that we've set them free. And we wind up experiencing the love and the peace and the happiness and fulfillment that was there all along, just hidden by all the stories and the naming and the holding on to the feelings by avoiding them, that's possible when we kiss them, we bring them really close. And in fact, we wanna bring them even closer than kissing, like bring them all the way in. So we're not just touching the emotion, we're bringing it all the way in. And then, and then the third way is to just to infuse them with love, whatever the emotion is, no matter how intense, just to feel the love feel it, I mean, infuse it with love, to feel so much love for it. Uh, you probably know that I've studied Rupert Spira, I continue to, and I watch lots of his videos, and informs a lot of what we do here. And I heard him on one of the videos, somebody was saying he'd been depressed his whole life, and that he'd been told that uh, he was carrying, I don't know, something like 57 generations of depression. And Rupert said, when it's something that intense, and it's been with you your whole life like that, probably about the only way to work with the emotion is to love it, to bring it so close and feel love for it. So for any of you that have had lifelong, mine happens to be fear. I just have just fear. <laughs> it's just, that's my lifelong thing. So it's not depression, but it's fear. So I've been doing a lot of loving with my fear. And now if you don't like the word love, because that does turn off some people, then you can think of it as allowing, that you're just feeling so much allowing of the emotion, so much welcoming of the emotion, because that's who we truly are, just like we are love, but if love puts you off a little bit, be the allowing space. Okay, so now let's walk through these three together. I'll see if there are any comments or questions before we do this. Okay, I don't see any. All right, so, so let's do this together. So what I'd like for you to do now is, unless you're driving, is uh, please close your eyes and We'll just take a few seconds to see what emotions might arise. Often when we're still, then we start feeling the emotions that are there. That when we've been thinking or talking or doing something we don't notice. 
and if you're not really noticing any like what I'm what I will, what we typically call as negative emotions if you're not noticing one right now you might think uh, is there something later today that you're kind of afraid to go do or you're uh, is it resistant in doing or you're not happy you're doing maybe there's an emotion that you can rev up right now related to that or maybe you're feeling anxiety right now about this you might notice you're feeling anxiety oh gosh i've got to do an exercise a closed eye exercise during this i thought i was just going to listen to somebody <laughs> so you may have some sort of, of anxiety or resentment right now that you're that you're here with this so feel that Maybe you have an annoyance with a coworker, or a spouse, or a parent, or a, a child. Maybe bring that to mind. If you can't think of anything, you might pause this right now if you're watching it on replay until something comes to you. Or watch the rest of it the next time. Maybe come back and watch this part of it when an emotion comes up. All right, so now let's, I'm going to assume there's an emotion there. I'm going to combine all of these. So the first is that you have your eyes closed. I found it easier with my eyes closed. I don't guess I've ever tried it with my eyes open unless I was driving. I mean, we can do these while we're driving or walking. So I've done it then, I guess. But uh, it might be easier to close your eyes and, and, then, and then whatever the emotion is, we're going to have tea with it first. So invite it, invite it in. Welcome it. See yourself sitting down at a table that has tea, tea cups and a teapot there. Just allow the emotion to be there too. And you might tell the emotion, let's have some tea together. You've been with me a long time, never really gotten to know you. Let's just, let's just be with each other right now. That right there, you could do that. Just sit there for a while. All of this we're doing not to get rid of the feelings. We do want to watch that. If we think, oh, I'll do this to get rid of the feeling, then we've actually engaged the separate self that's trying to do something and is going to look for something to change. So we're not doing it for that reason. One time um, I was really bothered, you know, had some sort of intense emotion and sat down to do some work and and realized, yeah, I don't want to live with this the rest of my life. I want to get rid of this. But sometimes the admission of that, I was honest with myself. No, I don't want to live with this. And all of a sudden it relaxed because I realized I haven't lived with this 60 something years. I can live with this the rest of my life. But, uh, but that relaxed it by being honest. So if you ever find yourself like, I've got to get rid of this, ask yourself, can I live with this the rest of my life? If you tell yourself no, sometimes it'll shift like it did for me, or maybe you don't work with the emotion right then, because then you're trying to get rid of it and it, and it might not be real useful. But let's assume that you're, you know, you, you got it. You're not trying to get rid of an emotion. You're going to allow the emotion and it'll do what it does. Sometimes I've felt a uh, tremendous relief doing this, and sometimes it's 10 minutes later, an hour later the next day. So we don't have to look for anything to happen right now. In fact, that's we really don't want to do that. All right, so first we're having tea with the emotion, and you did. Um, just allowed it. Okay, now we're going to move into well, uh, the bringing it really close, the frog and the princess story. So you've already welcomed it, so you can welcome it again since I've been talking. Now, imagine it getting really close, like to your heart, your throat. Bring it really close. There's a sense of intention, if you will, like you're, doing, you're bringing it close. Bring it close. Feel it move first, very close to your chest or throat, maybe, maybe your stomach area or solar plexus, whatever seems right to you. And now bring it even closer, like bring it into your body. Let it merge with you.
and I've done this and at this point, especially with some intense emotions, I feel a lot of resistance. I have felt, not, not always, but I have felt a lot of reasons like, oh, it really won't merge with me. But I've stuck with it and just not, not, it's not a willpower energy. It's just an intense invitation energy. Like, come on in. And I just feel myself sort of pulling it in, but without force, just really opening and allowing it to come fully in. All the way in. You may have to do this in steps. If maybe all you can do is like hold it really close for a while, in like a few days, months, whatever. Then um, if it's a long standing, lifelong emotion, and then someday you'll it'll merge with you. Okay, then now assuming that it's not you haven't let, that hadn't completely merged with you. Feel the emotion and then infuse it with love. Just feel so much love for it, like you do a loved one, a child or nephew or niece or grandchild, a spouse. Just feel so much love for that emotion, like you're hugging it. Just filling it with love. Again, if love's not a good word, allowing just it's that welcoming, allowing, open energy. Okay, so I'm going to stop that exercise now. Just so you know, everything we just did, sometimes I've done it for like 30 seconds, the whole step or just one of them, whatever comes to me. I trust that whatever comes to me is the right way to be with the emotion at the time. And others, I've spent, <laughs> one time I spent several hours on a Saturday afternoon with an, intent emo uh, an intense emotion. So, so, uh, so you trust yourself, trust yourself, maybe it's five minutes today, maybe some other day, it's 30 minutes or or if all you ever have is five, seem to ever have is five minutes, that's fine. Five minutes, two minutes, 30 seconds. I've done some of these on a phone call where I've started to feel something and then I'll just, I'll welcome it. I'll just welcome it. I'll welcome this motion. Um, so there are some other ways to work with some more a deeper intense emotions. We do that in the praxis. It's really beyond what we'll do here ever in um, in um, this group, uh, just because of it needs a lot of context and information around it. But um, so if you're ever interested in, in knowing more about how we work with emotions in other ways at the deeper level, then um, and what we do in the Praxis for anything. I mean, the Praxis is wonderful. It's an ongoing program. would love to talk with you about the Praxis at any time. But, um, but this is great. What you have today is, you know, most of what you'll ever need. So I invite you to keep revisiting this and play with it. If you have any questions at any time, DM me, or I'm always happy to have a short call with you about this make sure it makes sense you know how to work with it uh if you try it and it makes you know let us know how it's going in the comments would love to hear from you how it's going so again we explored why this is important otherwise <laughs> the veils of you know covered over it's almost like a bunch of post-it notes all over us keeping us from living as who we truly are protecting us from being the free person we are. So it's very important to do this emotional component. We went over three ways to work with emotions. You have tea with them, you bring them really close, the princess and the frog, and then you bring them in all the way and uh, is the next step of that. And then uh, another way is to infuse them with love and allowing. Just love them so much that they that winds up merging you with them, them with you as you do that. And um, also February the 18th, I have another free workshop 
It's that's a Saturday from 11 to 12:30 Central. Love for you to come to that. Put send me a message or in the comment that you want to come on February the 18th, and I will send you the Zoom link. There's no registration. You just just let me know you want to come, and it's free and it's not recorded. Love to share five insights and illusions for why we're not living is the way that we are. All right, thank you for being here today, and I'll see if they have any questions or comments before I go. Okay. None. I mean, I didn't mean it the way that sounded. I just meant like, okay, or not. All right. So thank you for being here today. Look forward to seeing you next week. Love you. Bye.